Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a custom lower third animation using Adobe Photoshop. In this lesson, we'll go over how to use the timeline panel to build the animation and render it out as a video. From there, we'll overlay the animation onto a mock video using Adobe Rush and export the final product as an MP4. So let's jump right into this lesson and get started. All right, so I went ahead and launched Photoshop. Now the first step is creating the document. I'm gonna click on Create New. In the New Document window, select Film and Video, and then choose 1920 by 1080 at 72 PPI. Now in the preset details here, the only thing we wanna change is the background contents from white to transparent, and then go ahead and click Create. The lower third animation we'll be building today will have four elements, a main rectangle, a secondary rectangle, a person's name, and the person's title. So let's start by clicking the rectangle tool, and on the left side of the canvas, click and drag all the way to the right side of the canvas. I have a color fill already applied. You can pick a color if you want. This can be adjusted later on. So there's our first rectangle, just bring it down. So obviously you want this in the lower third part of the canvas. Let's click on the rectangle frame or the rectangle tool again and create a secondary rectangle about that size. Now I have a different color, a darker color for this. Now I have rounded corners. I'm just gonna make those straight. And so the idea here is to have this frame or this rectangle mask out of the main object here, the main rectangle, and then reverse once the animation has played through. But first we also have to add the person's name here as well as the person's title. So let's do that. I'm gonna click on the type tool and then click on the canvas. And what I'll do is I'll make this bold. And I want to make this bigger. So Command T to free transform. Hold your shift key and then drag out a larger version here. I'm gonna bring it into this space here. I also want to make it white and then just make it something like that is fine. Now the name, the fictional name I used for this lesson is Priscilla Payne. So P-R-I-S-C-I-L-L-A. Pain. So this means we have to make our rectangle a little bit bigger and that's our wider I should say So there it is there. I'm just going to Command T if you're on Windows, it's control T and just adjust the right side. So it fits the name there and Then you have your little check or check uh, mark up top. Just click that I'm gonna rename these layers so we don't con get confused on which layer is which so rectangle 2 is secondary rectangle and rectangle one is main rectangle so you can see because i've named them makes it a lot easier so i'm going to click on priscilla Payne, hold my option or alt on windows and just drag out another copy down below and this is where you'll put the uh, person's title so president this will be much smaller, but just type in the text first and CEO. And typically you'd want this at a lighter weight than the name. So instead of bold, let's try medium. And again, I'm just going to hold command and T while holding shift. Just drag in one of the corners to make it a bit smaller. You can also play with the tracking here. So hold your option key and then right arrow if you want to open that up a bit just to eat up some of that other space. I'm also just gonna make it a little bit smaller and then nudge it up. You want it closer to the name there. Okay, so let's approve that and then I have another color here, purple, that contrasts well with that background. So what I want to do is actually fill the space a little bit more. Bring Priscilla down. Let's click on secondary rectangle. So there's a lot of maneuvering and adjusting that you can do at the beginning when you're setting this up and that's okay. You wanna make sure that it looks good. So I'm pretty happy with that. So this is basically going to be the lower third. So now that we've done this, 
Let's go ahead now and start our animation process. To apply the animation, we're gonna need to use the timeline panel. And so to access that, go up to window and make your way down to timeline. Open that up and you can see that it creates this large panel below the workspace. And the one that we're gonna be working with is the video timeline. So you see that, go ahead and click it. Now basically what that does, it duplicates all the layers from the layers panel down below. And this is where you can start adding keyframes and using the transform keyframe animations to add some pretty cool transitions uh, to your animation. So before we go any further, we have to convert both rectangles to smart objects. So click on main rectangle, right click and convert to smart object, and then click on the secondary rectangle and convert to smart object as well. What that does is allow us to add transform keyframes to both rectangle shapes. One other thing I want to do before we move forward is click on President and CEO text frame. Hold your command or control if you're on Windows. Click on Priscilla Payne and secondary rectangle. And let's go ahead and group those by clicking the create new group. And you can see that all three of those elements are now in a group in my layers panel as well as in my timeline. I wanna add animation to the main rectangle and to do that, make your way down to the timeline panel and click the arrowhead. You can see one of the options there is the transform keyframe and that's the one we'll be using. So I'm gonna click that and you can see it creates a keyframe at the very beginning. And basically what we wanna do here is transform that shape. And to do that, again, Command T or Control T on Windows you can also go up to edit and then free transform. Either one of those will work. And basically what I wanna do here, let me just put that back. I wanna grab the right hand side of the shape and bring it all the way to the left until it's not visible anymore. So let's do that. You might have to zoom in. If you have to zoom in, it's option and scroll in with your mouse. That's alt and scroll if you're on Windows. And just have it kind of sitting like that is fine. I'm gonna hit the check mark to accept that. And then with my playhead, I'm gonna move it to the boat, the 20 frame mark. And again, I'm going to Command T to free transform. Actually, I have to create a transform keyframe first. Now I can go ahead, Command T. I'm gonna grab that handle and bring it all the way back to its original position. Just bring the right hand side all the way back to the right hand edge of the canvas. Once you see that it snaps, go ahead and click the check mark again. If I zoom out, I can play this and let's have a look. So there is how it's gonna start and I'm moving it to the right. And you can see that rectangle comes in as a starting point to our animation. Next, we're gonna add a mask with an animation to have this portion reveal out of the main rectangle. So let's do that part next. I wanna add animation to the group now, but before we go any further, I want to add a mask underneath. So for this, we'll be using the rectangle marquee tool. Go ahead and click that and basically create a selection in the empty space underneath the group. And just make it wide enough where the group can fit right through. So basically the secondary rectangle, make sure this selection that you're creating here is wider than that. You can go ahead and release. I'm gonna go back to my layers panel while holding option, make sure that you have your group selected here. Hold option and click add layer mask. What that does is in, it inverts the mask. So it allows me, if I click on all three of these and go back to my move tool, I can move these down and you can see it's hidden behind that selection that we created there. I'm just gonna hit Command Z to go back. Let's go back to the timeline panel and collapse the group there and then collapse the sub groups, which is the name, the title, and the secondary shape, the rectangle, okay? And so the first, we set the first keyframe to play at the 20 frame mark. So let's move this to about the one second mark here. Or maybe, yeah, let's do one second and then we can always adjust. And basically what we wanna do here is add a keyframe to each one, each layer as a starting point. So let's click one on president and CEO, which is the title. 
Let's click a key frame for transform for the name. And then finally, let's do the same thing here. Um, add a keyframe for the secondary rectangle, okay? And basically what we want this to do is we want this to be, uh, to come out at the beginning, right? So let's go back to our layers panel and click the group. Make sure you're on your move tool and then hit command T. Oh, I'm sorry. Select all three, so president, Priscilla Payne, and secondary rectangle. Then do Command T, it, it will only select those two and not the mask as well. So just select all three of these and let's move it down. Hold your shift key to uh, make sure that it's straight and it's not moving off to the left or right. Then go ahead and click the check mark. Now let's go to about the 10, 10 frame or uh, 20 frame mark there. And again, these keyframes can be adjusted afterwards. If you think that it's playing out too slow, then we can adjust them. Again, you'll have to add another transform keyframe to each one of these individual layers. However, you can move them as a group, which is, which is um, working efficiently. You don't have to move them one at a time, which is nice. So again, let's click president. Um, hold your shift key and then click se secondary rectangle. That selects all three and make sure you're on your move tool, command T or go up to edit free transform. And you can see it highlights the selection. I'm gonna bring it back up, hold your shift key so it, it stays in position and then move it to about here, okay? And then let's go ahead and accept that. And let's see how this looks now. So we have our main rectangle come in first, followed by the mass, so I'm gonna move that up a bit. You can see, you kinda of wanna have it in line with, um, I mean, I'll leave it for now, but you wanna have that in line with the shape. You can see that it, it reveals out of that shape, which is fine. And then we can go ahead now and start reversing the animation. So now that we've set it up to play, the next step is to set it up to reverse. And basically what we're gonna be doing here is copying the the existing keyframes and repeating them to reverse. So we'll do that next. I'm gonna drag the playhead to about the four second mark in the timeline and add another transform keyframe. I'm gonna click on the second keyframe in the main rectangle dropdown, right click, copy, go to that third keyframe that we just created, right click and paste. So we're gonna add another keyframe at the 20 frame mark and at this point, I'm gonna click the very first keyframe in the animation, right click, copy, go to the last keyframe and paste. Now what this will do is it will basically reverse the same animation we just created rather than do it all over again. So let me play that out. I'm just gonna press the space bar on my keyboard. So that's about a four second animation and then it reverses back to um, its original state. We're gonna add reverse animation to the group, so the name, the title, and the secondary rectangle, but let's do them individually. I'm gonna drag the playhead to about the three second mark in the timeline and add a keyframe. I'm gonna click on the second keyframe in the timeline for Priscilla Payne, right click, copy, click on that third keyframe and paste. Let's move it about to the 20 frame mark, and then click keyframe to add another transform keyframe there. Click on the first keyframe, right click, copy, and paste it on that last keyframe. Now if you play this out, you can see that we've already transitioned the Priscilla Payne to reverse. Now we have to do that to the other two. So let's go down to president and CEO and add a keyframe at the three second mark there. Let's click on the second keyframe in the president and CEO layer in the timeline, copy, click on that third keyframe and paste. Move the playhead to about the 20 frame mark there and add another keyframe. Click that first keyframe in the president and CEO layer, copy that and paste it in that last keyframe. Now you can see that we've animated both of those. 
Now we just have to do the same thing to the rectangle. So I'm gonna move down in the timeline here and at the three second mark, create another keyframe. And at this point, click the second one, right click, copy. Click the one we just created, right click and paste. Move the playhead to the 20 frame mark. Add another transform keyframe. Click on the very first keyframe on that layer in the timeline, copy. Go to the last keyframe that we just created, paste. You can see it's no longer visible. Let's play this out and see how it looks. Go to the very beginning and tap your space bar. There goes the first. It's gonna come in a little slow at first, let it play out, but then it should run smoothly the second time around. So let's do that again. You can see there's the first animation, Priscilla Payne, and then it reverses and so does that. So now that we have this set up, let's go ahead and export it, render it as a .mov, and what we'll do is overlay that in a video editing software like Adobe Premiere Rush. But let's export it first. To render the video, click on the Timeline Options icon and then select Render Video. That'll bring up the Render Video dialog box. You can go ahead and rename it if you want. As a default, it names what the document is named. Select the folder where you want this to save to. And the format, as a default, it'll probably default to H.264, which will render out as a MP4. Now, we want the, the transparent background to uh, still be intact when we render this out. So I'm going to render it out as a QuickTime format. And you can see the document size is 1920 by 1080. And the other thing that we want to do is add an alpha channel. You can see under the render options here, it says none. Go ahead and click that and select straight unmatted. Once you've done that, go ahead and click render and that will render out. And the next step is adding it into Adobe Rush. So we'll do that up next. I'm using Premiere Rush for this, but just know that any video editing software will work for this last step. I've created a new project in Rush. I have a short clip here from Adobe Stock that we'll use as a mock video. I'm gonna click that and hit create. That's gonna prepare the media for me. And then we can add our lower third on top. So there's the mock video. I have the lower third here, which I'm just gonna drag from my desktop into the timeline at about the, let's do the three second mark in the timeline. That'll take a second, then we'll play the video and see how it looks. I'm gonna press play and let that play out. You can see the animation comes in with the reveal and then the reverse, just the way we set it up. As a last step, if you wanna export or share this in Adobe Rush, just click the share button in the upper left hand corner. Give the project a name. Choose a target to save to. In the advanced settings, you can choose the resolution, the frame rate and other settings. Once you're set, just click export and it'll render in Adobe Rush and then you can open and share it on social media or any other platform. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to create lower third animations using Adobe Photoshop. Hit the like button or leave a comment if you found this tutorial helpful. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest content published every other week. If you'd like to check out another video on how to create animations in Photoshop, click right up here. Otherwise, take care and keep creating.